Hi, I'm Melissa Mir. Welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. Today I'm going to talk to you about my rotary tumblers. These tumblers are used to kind of burnish your metal. It brings out a nice high sheen to them. Doesn't necessarily polish them as a lot of people kind of think that they do because you put in a piece of metal that's not quite so shiny and it comes out bright and shiny, smooth and silky. However, we'll talk a little bit about how that does happen. Uh, there's also a misconception that throwing something in a tumbler will also harden your metal. And maybe to a slight extent, but not anything that's going to really, truly be considered hardening your metal. Now, I have three different tumblers in my studio, two of which are lower tone tumblers, and one is a cheap one from Harbor Freight. A lot of people ask me my opinion on the two different types of tumblers, or the two different brands, rather. And I figured I had a coupon for Harbor Freight one time. So I figured I'll go ahead and buy one, do a little bit of an experiment to see which ones I prefer. And let's talk about some of those results now. So here are the tumblers that I have in my studio. I actually have three of them. Like I said, I have two Lord Tone tumblers that are this blue one. And then I have the red one here, which is a Harbor Freight uh, special. Like I said, it dropped the price to maybe about $30. And I figured I could afford $30 so that I could give more of an informed opinion on this. So the Lord Tone tumblers, the way that they work, and even the Harbor Freight, we have a belt and a gear that's in here. And it just turns that belt, and in doing so, it's going to turn our barrel. Now, inside the barrel is what's really important. Now, there's different types of shot that you can buy, and that refers to the media that you're going to be using in the tumbling process. In my studio, I use stainless steel mixed shot, which means that there are different shapes inside of this. Now the stainless steel part is very important. You can buy steel shot, however, you'll be buying your shot twice. So you might as well just go with the stainless steel. It's a little bit more expensive, probably around 20 to $30 per pound. And each tumbler, at least my small ones, take about two pounds of stainless steel shot. And it doesn't look like it's very much when you've got it inside the barrel. I don't know if you can tell that very well here on the video. But there's just not very much. Maybe that much is my stainless steel shot inside of this barrel. Now the reason that I suggest stainless steel over steel shot and saying that if you buy steel, you may end up purchasing it more than once is because steel rusts with water. So you would need to take out your shot after every time you use it, rinse it off really well, and then more importantly, dry it out really well. With the stainless steel shot, I leave mine stored in my barrel just like this where and you can see that I have water inside of this so I leave mine where it's covered with water maybe by about an inch or so and I just store my shot this way and I've done this now for about eight years and you can see my shot still looks fantastic it's not dirty it's not rusty and it's it's still as good as the day I bought it so spend the money once use it for a lifetime Okay, so how do we use this? And the reason that I was saying some people call this polishing, well, like I said, you can take something that's got sort of a polish to it, maybe not quite too much, or even has a little bit of tarnish on it. So in this case, this is a, a copper bracelet that I've done, but I've not protected it with anything, and so we're starting to get that oxidation. It's starting to become more gold and brown colored. So I'm just gonna throw both of these in here. Now you wanna have it so that your water covers your shot and your pieces just a little bit. And that's really all you need. Now when I use my my tumblers, there's a couple of different compounds that you can use. You've heard maybe that people will use Dawn. It's important that you use the original blue Dawn, not the green stuff or scented or whatever else, just the original blue. Another thing that you can use is the Sunsheen Burnishing Compound, and I believe that other carriers have different types of burnishing compound. I bought this bottle eight years ago when I bought my tumbler, and you can see I still have quite a bit of this left, and that is because all it takes is just a small capful, and that's it. Now, if you're going to use Dawn, I would only put in just a couple of drops. What that does is it lubricates everything so that all the metal pieces will be able to kind of glide past each other, and it helps to glide that metal on your pieces that you are tumbling. Now, this is burnishing. Burnishing is when you take your metal and you basically smooth it down with more of a a pressing action rather than polishing which takes away metal and that's how you get rid of your scratches and stuff like that. Now this will also help to remove some of those burrs if you have sharper pieces. I know a lot of my uh, colleagues will take ear wires, throw them in and 
uh, leave them you know, for a few hours and it will help to round those ends of the ear wires. So first thing I want to do is I want to seal my container. So we have this rubber seal on this, on the part of the lid. The next thing I'm going to do is put my cap on, the washer, and then a little screw nut that goes on top of this. Now this screw nut happens to have a groove that corresponds to a little divot here in my tumbler. And that is just so that I can line it up. And then the next thing I'm going to do is plug it in. Now you're going to see here, my tumbler is a little bit older, and I believe that my belt is also getting a little bit stretched out. So when that happens, this actually started working right away. Sometimes I have to kind of give this a little bit of a push to kind of get it going. And you can hear that the Lord Hone is very, very quiet. And it's kind of nice because I can stick my stuff in here, leave it for hours, and not worry about it. So we'll let that one kind of go. So the other thing that you have here is the Harbor Freight one. Now why does the Harbor Freight, why did I need to get both of them? Well, that is because I had a lot of students and colleagues that would go over to Harbor Freight and buy this tumbler for $40 versus $80 for a lower tone. And then they were like, well, I'm really unhappy with this. It's, as soon as I got it, the belt broke or whatever the case might be. So I've actually been pretty fortunate. I've had this tumbler now for about four or five years. It does not get heavy use. However, the belt has not broken yet. We'll see what happens. But anyway, so it's just like, like the other tumblers. Take off your screw knob, use the washer to release the lid. So I just kind of slide it in and give a twist. Pops the lid up, open up my piece or my barrel, pull it out. Now, the one thing that I have noticed about my tumbler from Harbor Freight versus this of my Lord Tone. My Lord Tone, I can run three to like five different uh, cycles of polishing or burnishing and my water is still good. After just 10 minutes, I don't know if you can see this, after 10 minutes of tumbling I have very dark water and that is the barrel. So the barrel itself gives off a lot of murky junk as well. And I know that I've read a lot of people having problems with that. There's nothing that you're going to be able to do. I have cleaned through this barrel. I have run it with cleaning solutions. And it still is like this every time I run it. So on this particular tumbler, tumbler I have to change my water every time. So, you know, you have a couple of different things. One thing that I like about the Harbor Freight that's not on the lower tone is the Harbor Freight actually has an on-off switch. So I can easily turn it on and off. Whereas the lower tone, your on-off switch is whether or not you have it plugged in. So those are a few of the things that I've kind of noticed about the different tumblers. So I put these pieces in. This was a very heavily tarnished pendant. And there's still quite a bit of tarnish on here. But like I said, it ran for like maybe 10 minutes. Not very much at all. But this was also quite heavily tarnished. And you can see that now the silver is nice and bright and shiny. You'll also notice that there is a stone inside of my piece. Can you tumble with stones in there? Yes and no. It depends on the stone. You do not want to use any kind of a soft stone, like a pearl or a, an opal or anything like that that you know is a little softer because it will get damaged inside of this shot as it goes through the burnishing process. So in this case, I had some garnets, little tiny gar garnets, and they did just fine. Now, another thing that you can do too is you can take something that has liver of sulfur and plop it into here. Go ahead and put it through the tumbler. It will remove some of that uh, liver of sulfur patina, but not always all of it. Matter of fact, I have found that with the liver of sulfur, when I do that, what will happen is I end up with a really pretty gunmetal finish. So take some time, play around with it, but hopefully now that will help you make a little bit more of an informed decision when it comes to tumbler and maybe what's going on if you have issues, especially like I said with this gunk that's in here. This is only 10 minutes so we're kind of a little bit gray and murky. If I run this for another 10-15 minutes it will be black water. Now this tumbler with it being this murky and dirty, I would not store my shot in this. So I would take a strainer, empty it out, clean off my shot really well with some nice good hot water, maybe a little bit of soap, kind of rinse it through uh, and run it through with my fingers, put clean water back into this and then I would store it inside of this barrel.